The girl, whose name will never be mentioned, is the companion of a wealthy woman named Mrs. Van Hopper. They are traveling and are currently staying at a hotel in Monte Carlo. Mrs. Van Hopper said that Maxim de Winter, the owner of Manderley, one of the richest estates in England, will be here today. According to Mrs. Van Hopper, Maxim de Winter is still grieving the loss of his wife, who passed away a year ago. The girl had the honor of meeting Mr. de Winter in person. Mrs. Van Hopper couldn't miss the opportunity to establish new influential connections and immediately engaged Maxim in conversation. Mr. de Winter tried with all his might to get away from Mrs. Van Hopper's intrusive society, but she was too persistent. Initially, Maxim thought the girl was Mrs. Van Hopper's relative, but the woman said that she was only a servant. The girl is talented at drawing and dreams of becoming an artist, but for now she only receives mockery from people like Mrs. Van Hopper. The girl's only chance to escape from such a life is to marry well. Throughout the night, Mrs. Van Hopper drank and gossiped with friends, including about Rebecca, Maxim's late wife. The next morning, Mrs. Van Hopper felt very unwell and asked the girl to call a doctor. Mrs. Van Hopper's condition did not improve, so the girl came to the terrace alone, where she was going to have breakfast. However, she was denied service because the terrace was not for servants. Mr. De Winter, who witnessed this conversation, said that the girl would have lunch with him. The girl felt awkward, but she agreed, as she was very hungry. The girl explained that she is a companion of Mrs. Van Hopper, who travels a lot. In fact, Mrs. Van Hopper pays her for the company. The girl is grateful for this opportunity as she lost her parents and was left completely alone. Maxim treated the girl to oysters, and after breakfast, he thanked her for the wonderful company. Mrs. Van Hopper is still unwell. On the same day, the girl received a note from Maxim, who was already waiting for her by his car. The girl happily accepted the offer to ride together. They understand each other, as both have experienced the loss of loved ones. During the walk, Maxim noted that the girl is well-read and curious. Lately, he has been in great need of a conversational partner. When Maxim offered the girl to drive, she was embarrassed. It was a very exciting experience for her. However, the girl asked personal questions and showed excessive curiosity, which seemed to displease Maxim. Mrs. Van Hopper suspected that her companion was not actually at tennis lessons. The girl responded evasively. The rest of the evening, she berated herself for excessive curiosity about Maxim's personal life. In the morning, she received another note from Mr. De Winner. Since then, they started seeing each other every day. Of course, Mrs. Van Hopper's suspicions only grew stronger. The girl fell in love with Maxim. This week was the best in her life. She keeps all the romantic notes from Maxim. Their dates continued, and with each passing time, parting became harder for them. Meanwhile, Mrs. Van Hopper felt better and announced that she was tired of Europe, so they were leaving for New York the next day. Of course this news was an unpleasant surprise for the girl. She cried all evening. Mrs. Van Hopper, who had already guessed the companion's secret affair, said it was for the best because a maid is not a match for someone like Maxim de Winter. Besides, the demise of his wife had greatly affected him. In the morning, when all the things were already packed, the girl couldn't bear it and went to his room to say goodbye. Maxim, who was unaware of her sudden departure, offered the girl to go with him to Mandalay as his wife. The girl did not expect Mr. De Winter to ask her to be his wife. Of course she agreed. Learning about this, Mrs. Van Hopper was pleased for the newlyweds, or at least pretended to be. When Maxim left for his future wife's belongings, Mrs. Van Hopper openly told her former companion that she would never take Rebecca's place. Barely holding back her emotions, the girl bid Mrs. Van Hopper farewell forever and left. Now a new beautiful wife awaits her with a wealthy husband. Manderley estate turned out to be vast and luxurious. It had everything the girl could ever dream of. The entire staff welcomed the master of the estate. Maxim took the wife in his arms and carried her into the mansion, introducing to the housekeeper Mrs. Danvers. She gave the impression of a cold and stern woman. Maxim also introduced the new Mrs. De Winter to Frank Crawley, the estate manager. The men had business matters to attend to, so Maxim asked the housekeeper to show Mrs. De Winter the mansion. Mrs. Danvers led the new mistress through all the corridors and rooms of the mansion. The estate had been in the family for over 300 years and was a gift from Henry VIII. For Mrs. De Winter, it felt like a fairy tale. She had never seen such luxury before. The house had a huge library, with paintings and family portraits hanging all over the walls. The De Winter family was highly respected and traced its roots back to the Tudors. The new Mrs. De Winter, coming from a humble background, clearly did not fit into the circle. Finally, Mrs. Danvers showed the new mistress the bedroom. According to the housekeeper, the late Mrs. De Winter's bedroom was elsewhere, and this used to be a guest room. Mrs. Danvers spoke extensively about Rebecca and spoke warmly of her, which obviously made the new mistress uncomfortable. However, the girl forgot the bad things when she was alone with her husband.
Mrs. De Winter wanted Maxim to be frank with her and talk about his late wife. However, he always avoided such conversations. At night, Mrs. De Winter experienced nightmares. Sometimes she felt uneasy in this house. Additionally, Maxim suffered from sleepwalking. Mrs. Danvers advised Mrs. De Winter never to wake him during those moments. The girl tried to adjust to her new life in the luxurious mansion. During breakfast, when she asked the husband if he knew about his sleepwalking, Maxim wished her a good appetite and left. The house was large and filled with people, but everything here seemed cold and unfamiliar to the girl. When she found a room she hadn't been in yet, curiosity got the better of her. Apparently, this is the boudoir that used to belong to Rebecca. Mrs. De Winter rummaged through things and accidentally broke a porcelain item. Hastily cleaning up the shards, the girl injured her hand. She immediately hid the fragments, not wanting anyone to find out. Today, there will be a reception in the house. Mrs. Danvers showed the mistress the menu and asked about the sauce. The girl, without even reading the menu, replied that everything suited her. The housekeeper said that Rebecca paid special attention to sauces. Confused, the new Mrs. De Winner asked the housekeeper to choose the sauce that Rebecca would have chosen. The girl prepared for the upcoming reception. On many items, even on the comb, the first letter of Rebecca's name is engraved, as if she were still the mistress of this house. One day as the husband and wife were walking through the estate, their dog led Mrs. De Winter to a cabin by the sea. It was clear that this place was abandoned. The dog growled and barked for some reason. Startled, Mrs. De Winter asked if anyone was here. The dog continued to behave strangely. Behind a curtain, Mrs. De Winter saw a man who turned out to be the watchman's son. The man, who gave the impression of being mentally defective, said that this dog is not Mr. De Winter's but Rebecca's, who perished at sea. Now the girl understood why Maxim never wanted to walk by the shore. His beloved wife perished here, and this place evoked painful memories in him. Guests arrived at the house, Maxim's sister, Beatrice, and her husband. Mrs. De Winter showed the wedding photos. They spent their honeymoon in Italy. Beatrice was very happy for her brother, who was finally ready to move on. When Mrs. De Winter suggested reviving the tradition of holding balls, Beatrice and her husband accepted it with enthusiasm, unlike Maxim. Very old grandmother of Beatrice and Maxim, suffering from dementia, still believed that Rebecca was alive and that she was Maxim's wife. The grandmother demanded that her grandson answer what he did with Rebecca and who this girl was. A very unpleasant situation arose. Apologizing to Mrs. De Winter, Beatrice and her family left. However, trouble was not over. Mrs. Danvers, who personally cleaned Rebecca's boudoir at her request, noticed that one of the porcelain items was missing. It was very expensive, and Robert, one of the servants, was suspected of theft. At that moment, Mrs. De Winter barely holding back tears, confessed that she broke the item and hid the shards. She did not want Robert to be fired because of her. Everything in this house reminds of Rebecca. Even the handkerchiefs are embroidered with the first letter of her name. Mrs. De Winter is tired of feeling like the third will hear. Today she spent the night alone. The next day, the girl returned to the cabin by the sea, which was also an unnecessary reminder of Rebecca. Here she was found by Frank, from whom Mrs. De Winter learned that Maxim had left for London on business in the morning. Of course she was upset that her husband had left unannounced. Frank locked the cabin, saying that Maxim doesn't like this place. He also told Mrs. De Winter about how a year ago, Rebecca went alone on a yacht for a sea outing, and a storm began. Rebecca never returned. The body was found two months later. Certainly, Mrs. De Winter was unaware of these details. Frank advised her not to delve into the past. When Mrs. De Winter asked Frank to honestly answer whether Rebecca was beautiful, he said she was the most beautiful creature he had ever seen. Rebecca's presence in the house continues to weigh on Mrs. De Winter. It compelled her to enter the room of Maxim's late wife. Rebecca seems to still live here. Mrs. De Winter's solitude was interrupted by Mrs. Danvers, who said she left everything in this room as it was. Obviously, Mrs. Danvers was very attached to Rebecca and considered her perfect. The housekeeper combed Mrs. De Winter's hair as she used to do for Rebecca. Unlike Maxim's new wife, Rebecca had gorgeous dark hair. According to the housekeeper, Mr. De Winter used to laugh all the time. Losing Rebecca, he will never be happy again because he loved her more than life. Even though Rebecca passed away, she was still in the house. Mrs. De Winter doesn't want to admit it, but she also feels Rebecca's presence here. At night, she dreams of Rebecca wandering through the mansion. Mrs. De Winter has lost her peace. She had a different idea of life with the man she loved. Jack Favell arrived at the estate, wanting to see Mrs. Danvers. Jack was surprised that Maxim did not take his young wife with him to London. As it turned out, Jack was Rebecca's cousin. He suggested to the new Mrs. De Winter to go on a horse ride together. It was one of Rebecca's favorite activities. Although Mrs. De Winter had never ridden before, she decided to accept the offer. Later, 
Jack asked her if Maxim mentioned that Rebecca was in London the day she perished. The girl said the husband never talked to her about it. On that fateful day, Jack was supposed to meet his cousin for an important conversation. Now he will never know what she wanted to talk about. As it turned out, Maxim and Jack were far from being friends, so Jack asked Mrs. De Winter not to mention his visit. Before leaving, he hinted to be cautious with Maxim. When the servants were having dinner, Mrs. De Winter interrupted them and demanded Mrs. Danvers to explain why she invited Jack Favell for tea when he is not allowed to be here. Mrs. Danvers claimed she hadn't seen Jack Favell for over a year and was unaware of his visit. Maxim returned late. The servants informed him about Jack's visit. Maxim gave his wife a scandal because Mrs. Danvers told him about the horse ride. She also made sure to embellish some of the events. Mrs. De Winter tried to explain herself to the husband, but he did not want to listen. The girl realized that no one in this house is happy to have her here. Even the servants remain loyal to Rebecca. Mrs. De Winter decided to dismiss Mrs. Danvers, and she doesn't care about what her husband thinks about it. Mrs. Danvers shared that she took care of Rebecca when she was still a child. When Rebecca got married, they moved together to Manderley. Mrs. Danvers has never been married, dedicating her life entirely to Rebecca, who was her everything. In the end Mrs. De Winter changed her mind about firing the housekeeper, asking to help her adjust to the mansion and the new social circle. Aristocratic life is too unfamiliar for her. That same evening, Maxim asked his wife for forgiveness. He understands that she is not to blame for what happened. Mrs. De Winter is enthusiastic about designing the perfect outfit for the upcoming masquerade ball, as all the attention will be on her. Mrs. Danvers is helping her with this. It seemed they were beginning to get along. On the advice of her maid Clarice, Mrs. De Winter decided to base her future dress on the image of a lady in red from the portrait. This lady is Maxim's great-grandmother, one of the first female doctors in England. Preparations for the upcoming ball are in full swing. Mrs. De Winter wants everything to be perfect. The impression she makes will determine whether she is accepted into aristocratic society. It was time for the ball. All that is left for Mrs. De Winter is to put on her custom-made dress. The husband said he was very proud of her. A storm is raging outside, but despite the weather, the guests continue to arrive. Most of the guests have gathered, but Mrs. De Winter is not ready yet. To complete the image and look exactly like the lady in red, she put on a dark wig. When Mrs. De Winter descended, silence fell. Maxim looked shocked at his wife, then said that this was not a good joke and ordered her to go to her room immediately. Mrs. De Winter ran away in tears. Repentant Clarice was waiting her near the room, saying it was Mrs. Danvers's idea. Mrs. De Winter guessed that Rebecca was dressed the same way at her last ball. The guests could not stop gossiping about the incident. Concerned, Beatrice went up to Mrs. De Winter's room and advised her to go out to the guests as if nothing had happened. That's what any proud noblewoman would do. Beatrice found a simple dress for Mrs. De Winter. Gathering courage, she went out to the guests, pretending that everything was fine, as advised by Beatrice. Maxim also tried to keep his temper, but only in front of the guests. Leaning towards his wife, he whispered that the ball idea was a mistake and that he regretted bringing her here. The guests were having fun, but Mrs. De Winter was not in a festive mood. Suddenly she thought she saw Rebecca in the crowd. Mrs. De Winter followed her, but the silhouette kept moving away until she lost sight of it. After the dance, fireworks were set off. It seemed like everyone had forgotten the unfortunate incident, but Mrs. De Winter could never forgive herself. She thought the guests were shouting Rebecca's name. At night, Mrs. Danvers, who no longer concealed her hostile attitude toward the new mistress, said that she would never overshadow Rebecca. The housekeeper was sure that the new Mrs. De Winter deserved neither Maxim nor this house. Maxim could never love her because she was not Rebecca. Mrs. De Winter couldn't bear to hear this anymore, but the housekeeper continued telling her that she was not wanted by anyone. Suddenly, there was commotion near the house. It turned out that Frank Crawley's boat had hit a reef in the sea. Or was it not a reef? Divers brought Rebecca's yacht up from the bottom. Frank was unharmed and advised Mrs. De Winter not to look at it, but she didn't move. Rebecca's body was found in the yacht. She was identified by her hair and the engraving on the wedding ring. Maxim's family and close associates were in bewilderment. It turns out he lied to them all, and instead of Rebecca, some other woman was buried? No one knows where Maxim is. Late at night, Mrs. De Winter received a call from Frank and learned that her husband was being questioned by the police. Maxim never returned home. Mrs. De Winter realized she would find him in the cabin. He was indeed there and said that Rebecca had won. The wife demanded him to tell the truth. Maxim revealed that Rebecca did not perish at sea. He simply left her, already breathless, bare and deliberately damaged the yacht. It turns out Rebecca only played the role of the perfect wife in public, but in reality she was cruel and self-centered. She had many lovers, including Jack Favell. Maxim could not divorce Rebecca, or he would disgrace the name of his highly respected family. On that fateful day, 
Rebecca visited a doctor in London and learned she was pregnant. Of course, the child's father was not Maxim. His pride was trampled. He took a revolver and did it right here, in the cabin. Buried was another woman who was also found at sea. Mrs. De Winter realized that all this time Maxim suffered not out of love but out of hatred for his late wife. It prevented him from moving on. Maxim is ready to surrender to the police, but the wife asked him not to rush. Only they both know the truth. The new Mrs. De Winter cannot allow Rebecca to win completely. This story caused a real sensation in the press. The first court hearing took place. Of course, Mrs. Danvers was also present. As agreed with his wife beforehand, Maxim answered the questions calmly, but at some point emotions took over him. Now the most important thing for the spouses is not to let the detectives find the doctor in London whom Rebecca visited, otherwise, their legend will fall apart. On the same evening, Jack Favell visited Mandalay and revealed that on that day, he was supposed to meet Rebecca in the cabin, but Maxim was ahead of him. Jack has irrefutable evidence, a letter from Rebecca. If the judge sees this letter, he will never believe that Rebecca voluntarily left life. Why else would she invite someone to visit? Mrs. De Winter directly asked him how much he wanted for his silence. She was smarter than the men thought. Being an avid poker player, Jack Favell said he was willing to remain silent if they paid. Another court hearing took place. Mrs. Danvers, who was aware of the affair between Rebecca and Jack Favell, testified. The court already knew that Jack Favell wanted to conceal the note. A check for £10,000 sterling confirmed it. According to Mrs. Danvers, some time before her demise, Rebecca felt unwell. Moreover, her stomach was growing. This led the court to conclude that she might have been pregnant, and that's why she visited a doctor in London. Upon hearing this, Jack caused a scandal in the courtroom, accusing Maxim of taking Rebecca and their unborn baby away from him. Maxim was arrested. At the moment, there was only circumstantial evidence against him, but if detectives find the London doctor Rebecca consulted, it will be over for him. Detectives searched the Manderley estate for clues. However, Mrs. De Winter preempted them, finding the doctor's address in Rebecca's personal records. Mrs. Danvers accused Frank of aiding Maxim, who took Rebecca away from her. Like all men, Frank also dreamed of Rebecca, but she rejected him. Rebecca was as beautiful as a goddess and despised men, just playing with them. Mrs. De Winter ordered the housekeeper to pack her things and leave. While Maxim was in custody, Mrs. Danvers prepared to leave Manderley. Mrs. De Winter went to London and met with the very doctor, deceiving him to steal documents. Afterward, she hid and studied Rebecca's medical history. What she learned shocked her. Of course she was caught stealing. Mrs. De Winter said she didn't change anything in the medical history, only read it. Now Mrs. De Winter knows that Rebecca was not pregnant but was suffering from cancer. Apparently, Rebecca lied to her husband about the pregnancy to provoke him and make him end her suffering. Detectives are convinced that for the same purpose, Rebecca went to sea on the yacht and deliberately sank it. The wound was through, so no one found a bullet. Maxim was released from custody. Now he has found someone who truly loves and appreciates him. Mrs. Danvers, who returned to Manderley, set the estate on fire and burned everything that belonged to Rebecca. While Maxim helped extinguish the fire, Mrs. De Winter ran to look for Mrs. Danvers. Maxim saw the flames completely engulfing his estate. Meanwhile, Mrs. De Winter tried to persuade Mrs. Danvers, who stood on the rocky shore, not to take that step. But Mrs. Danvers had nothing more to lose. Madeley belonged only to Rebecca, and now neither Maxim nor his new wife would get anything. Mrs. Danvers took a step after all. Some time has passed. Mrs. De Winter still occasionally has nightmares about Manderley. Now she is happy with her husband. They travel the world and love each other more than life.